Hi and welcome to the Unquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and this is the fifth part in the video series where I'm building my entry into the Great Guitar Build Off 2021. And in this episode it's time to put on all the hardware, put some strings on the guitar and hopefully by the end of the episode I will have a playable instrument. Mounting the hardware should be pretty straightforward. I've got everything prepared on the guitar itself and I've got my parts laid out uh, on the other workbench so it should be a matter of putting it all on, screwing it down and we should be good to go. I'm going to start with wiping down and polishing the frets one more time and put a little bit of oil on the fretboard. I once again take out my Dremel with a new polishing disc and really clean up the frets. There's some residue from the masking tape of course and there are some minute scratches from handling the guitar during production. And of course I could have used polishing rubbers and do this by hand, but I think uh, using a Dremel is far more efficient and gives a better result. With the frets now nicely polished, I apply some Crimson Guitars uh, fretboard restorative oil, just to make sure the fretboard is in the absolute best condition it can be. And it's just a matter of applying the oil, wait a couple of minutes for it to soak into the fretboard, and then remove the excess uh, using a paper towel. With perfectly polished frets and a lovely oiled fretboard, it's time to install some string ferrules and of course mount the bridge. I start by cleaning some spilled finish from the holes using a stepper drill and then I use a 6mm dowel and a small hammer to tap in the string ferrules. And because I've pre-drilled all the holes for the bridge it's fairly easy to install it, it's just a matter of mounting it using the provided mounting screws and then reassemble the bridge by fitting all the saddles back in place. Mounting these Spurzel tuners can be a bit tricky, but luckily I just made a tutorial on how to use a special tool. You can see me use this black little uh, drilling guide to align the tuners and drill the hole for the mounting pin very accurately. If you haven't seen this tutorial, I'll leave a link in the video description down below and an annotation on screen. But yeah, please first watch this video and yeah, keep in mind if you're interested in how I mount these Spurzel tuners, check out my tutorial. After mounting the bridge and the tuners, it's first time for a cup of coffee and then I'm going to put in the pickups and to align the pickups I'm going to need two strings so I can make sure they're properly aligned and to do that of course I need to install the nut as well. Time to mount the pickups and I'm going to use these Fishman Fluence Modern Humbuckers and they should sound amazing in this guitar. And of course I start by unpacking all the needed parts, cables, wires and mount the pickups to the mounting rings. Something I don't often mention, I don't think I've mentioned it at all, the springs usually provided with pickups are very loose and I like to replace them with a stiffer model. And with the pickups loosely placed in the cavities, I attach the high and low E string and they help me to align the pickups before I mount them to the guitar body. And unfortunately this entire recording was out of focus, but yeah, I couldn't redo it. Luckily we're back in focus to install the nut and using a very large cocktail stick I apply two tiny drops of super glue to the underside of the nut and just glue it in place. And with the nut in place I use a tiny file and some sandpaper to make sure the sides of the nut are flush with the fretboard and the headstock. 
Next job is of course what most people uh, dread doing and that's wiring all the electronics and make sense of the spaghetti coming from the pickup cavities. Um, yeah, in this video it would be very hard to explain what's happening, so I'm going to put on some music. But if you're interested in how to wire Fishman pickups, yeah, check out my channel for a tutorial and I'll leave a link, as always, in the video description down below. The Fishman Fluence pickups have all kinds of switching capabilities uh, using the provided push-pull pots. And for this guitar I chose to have the tone control also switch between voicing 1 and 2 of these pickups. And with the volume control I can uh, do a 6 dB gain reduction. I recently started making my own battery holders. Um, I found the ones I could buy from the store, uh, not to be very practical or not for my intended purpose. So I started making them myself from a piece of aluminum, one millimeter thick aluminum. Most clips you can buy online or in a store uh, need to be screwed down in the top, so to say, they only have a bottom mounting. And I'm always scared the screws will penetrate all the way through the top. So I needed a battery clip that could be screwed to the side of the control cavity. And with a little bit of handiwork, you can easily make them yourself. And as you can see, they hold the battery in place just as well. And I added a personal touch to the back of the control cavity cover plate before I mounted it to the back of the guitar. With all the hardware mounted and the electronics sorted out, it's time to put some strings on this guitar, do a very basic setup and see how she plays. I always do a very basic setup during final assembly of the guitar and that's because this is the first time the guitar as a whole comes under string tension and yeah I like to leave it for a couple of days just to settle in before I do a final setup in the office where I have for example a much better tuner. Here I'm just checking if I can set the action, uh, tune it, do some intonation work, just make it playable and then yeah, leave it for a couple of days before final setup. Yeah, with the basic setup done, it's time to put on the finishing touches like some control knobs and of course some strap lock buttons. During this build I found out that using a piece of the packaging is a very convenient tool to set the height of your control knobs. And to make sure the guitar isn't dropped while it's played live on stage, I install some Schaller strap locks. A great custom guitar also deserves a custom guitar strap in my opinion and that's why I always make my own guitar straps. Off camera I already cut the two pieces of leather I'm going to need and I fitted my fret press with a hole punch to punch a lot of tiny little holes alongside the edges of the guitar straps and I'm going to hand stitch them using an accent color thread. Leatherworking and making guitar straps in particular isn't that difficult. Uh, all it takes, like most things, is time uh, and a bit of practice, of course. And especially uh, punching the thousands of tiny holes for the stitches is a bit time consuming. 
but it doesn't come close to the time it takes to hand stitch the accent color along the edge of the entire strap. <laughs> it takes me about 7 to 8 hours to hand stitch the entire strap. And yeah, the stitches aren't even really necessary, it's just decorative. But yeah, I like it a lot. My guitar straps have a somewhat unique mounting system or adjustment system that requires a couple of holes and then it's held in place using what's called Chicago book screws and yeah, you set it once to your desired length and it should be good forever uh, as long as you have that same preferred length. And of course I need to add an Upendor logo. that my entry into the great guitar build off 2021 is done and I am very happy with this guitar and I hope you are too and yeah leave your thoughts in the comment section down below if you think I should be on the short list to be judged by the official judges for this great guitar build off um, please cast your vote on the Great Guitar Build Off website. Look for the particip participants page and find me under my own name. I'm registered as Daniel Van Veen. So browse through all the participants, look for my name and cast your vote. I will leave all the details on where and when to cast your vote in the comment section down below and of course in the video description. So yeah, if you think I should be on the short list, yeah, please cast your vote. Uh, I hear you think, but Daniel, we haven't even heard the guitar yet. And I know, and I still have one episode left, and I've got something very special planned, which I hope I can do. It's very ambitious, so I hope I can do it. And in that finale, in the last episode, I will showcase this guitar and do a quick overview of the entire build. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Like always, if you liked this video, let me know by leaving a like. And if you're new to my channel, of course, please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you get notified when I upload the next episode. Yeah, I hope you liked this one as always, and I hope to see you in the next episode. But until then, have a nice week.